Hey everybody, welcome in to November. Can you believe it's November already? So some people call it Moonvember because crypto tends to do very well during this time of the month. And we have a lot of ground to cover. Your time is precious. So let's just jump right in. Edutainment, you know the name of the game. Thank you all for being there yesterday too. It was a fun day. So let's look at the crypto market real quick. The crypto market is holding ahead of the Fed. Some names are up, some names are down. Ethereum, Bitcoin, ever so slightly, XRP, Doge, dark green, Uniswap, dark green. I haven't seen that in a while. And uh, a lot of the layer ones are red. We'll talk more about those in a minute too. Let's jump ahead and look at the stock market. This is kind of interesting because uh, if you look at the big green spot there, you've got Baba, the Chinese stock, and Meta, dark green, Pfizer, of course, because, well, you know why they're making so much money. Separate issue. Um, but Tesla is also slightly positive, slightly green. But the big tech names are down. Amazon, Google, Apple, Microsoft, all getting hit. But there comes a time in every stock's life where they become stupid cheap. And last week, I believe Meta hit that level. So uh, there we are. Let's just jump in. As usual, good, the bad, and the ugly. We start with the most prominent category and good. And there's lots of good news, despite the fact the world is very nervous about the Fed. We'll talk a bit about that too. So first of all, October, yes, it was a little bit, not a big month, but this is the whole year so far for Bitcoin. January, down, big chunk, bounced, nearly most recovered in Feb, up a little bit in March, and then April, down, May, down, June, nasty month, down 37.9%, bounce, July 2022, and since then, kind of recovering climbing back up out of the hole. So the question is, what will November do? I believe it'll be positive. And I'll share some on-chain reasons as to why. So first of all, let's look at the market performance since the last FOMC meeting. This is a stunning chart and it shows you the dislocation, the uncoupling of crypto from other markets. And since the last FOMC meeting, you'll see here Ethereum and that was, I think, September 21st. Ethereum's up 15%, Bitcoin 5.5%, dollar index flat, very important. I believe dollar index will go up a little bit uh, after Wednesday. S&P down 1%, gold down 3%, NASDAQ down 4%. And yes, for the gold bugs out there, I'll be talking a bit about, a bit about uh, gold today as well. And uh, I may sound like a broken record, but I do believe Bitcoin sniffs out things way ahead of time. Sniffs out inflation. It can sense money printing. It sniffs out market turnarounds. It bottoms first, etc., etc. So that's important to watch. Let's look at money flow here. The digital asset investment product saw minor inflows, about 6 million, and a continuation of apathy seen amongst investors that has now lasted for seven weeks. Super flat. <laughs> it's kind of like the volatility of Bitcoin deadline. You know, if it was uh, one of those heart monitors, it'd be like beep. Anywho, um, Bitcoin did see about 13 million come in, and we'll talk more about some of the other names too. This is the performance by asset. Uh, Bitcoin, actually, no, 13.4 million for the week, which is good. Ethereum down two, uh, multi-asset funds down three, short Bitcoin down two. That's a bullish sign when that goes down. Solana down $100,000, nothing burger. XRP up half a million bucks. Woo, haven't seen that in a while. So a lot of people are jumping into XRP. I still scratch my head as to why. But anyway, Cardano flat and others up slightly. That's kind of what's happening. But Bitcoin and XRP have big money coming in. Interesting. So let's talk about hammering out of bottom. This is a familiar pattern. And this is from Glassnode. And here you can see the cycle lows. Uh, 2014 to 2015 of 28 days and uh, the day close imagine 172 bucks way back when in the early days um the cycle low as well for 2018 2019 19 days and 2021 2022 35 days we've been kept down here at the cycle low with a price under kind of 19k for about 35 days but the thing about this chart here is shows you very familiar patterns of exactly what is happening with the Bitcoin price. The green teal line is the Maya multiple of 0 0.6. And obviously the Bitcoin price and the gold is the Bitcoin realized price. And look at how, if history repeats, the crossover 
the time at the cycle though, and what happens after that. So we don't know if history will repeat this time. I kind of think it might. It has been pretty good so far. But at the very least, it'll rhyme. But I've got an even more important chart for you. This one here is a very interesting view. Again, from the team at Glassnode, they put out amazing stuff. And train your eye on the A, B little rings. They're a little hard to see. And I've got further charts that will point out some things that I think are really important to focus on. But during the last three bear markets, the monthly value has abruptly peaked above the yearly uh, during the distinct periods of extreme realized loss. Uh, post all-time high wave A, these are the early stages of a bear market when a top heavy market undergoes its first wave of loss realization during the post all-time high sell-off. Then B is for bottom discovery. This is the late stage bear market often culminate with a major capitulation event where a significant wave of loss realization occurs and peak negative sentiment is reached. And we've had that and we've, we're actually gone beyond that if you look at kind of the Twitterverse and what people are saying out there. And this wave is often intensified by the stress of time component of establishing the market floor. Unit sellers have finally hit exhaustion. So anybody who wanted to sell is pretty much gone. But I'm gonna take this chart and deface it a little bit. Apologies to Checkmate and the team at Glassnode, but I'm adding a couple of things. First, look at the three lightning strikes. That is the point where the little circle ring is when the crossover period is from the realized loss going down and through the blue line, which is the realized price. Then what I've done is I have added the arrow down to where the Bitcoin price is and where it goes after this lightning strike happens. Typically it goes up. It did it in 2015. It did it again in 2019. And here we are again in 2022. We have the lightning strike. The question is, where will the price go from here? And again, if history repeats, the price will go up. All we need is adoption. But I'm taking this one step further as well, because last week I spoke about 15 months and how important the 15 month level was. I will add that video here, 15 months. Remember that uh, it's important to look at, but let's add halvenings to this chart. So we have the 2016 happening on 9th of July, 2016. And then we have the May 2020 happening. I couldn't remember the exact date of that, but look at how far we are from the lightning strike, the green lightning strike to the happening over history. Again, it's 15 months and 15 months ahead of happenings is when the Bitcoin rally begins. And that is what we have in November, 2022. If history repeats, it tends to, and a lot of people trade based on information like this in history. So let's look at where we are so far, October crypto performance. In some large caps have seen massive strength on the backdrop of a substantial short squeeze. We talked about that last week as well, especially with Ethereum. And mean coin strength, a perfect storm. Dogecoin is up 144%, which actually is a large cap, which pu pushes up the large cap strength as well. And Ethereum has been on fire too. And of, co of course, the Doge strength is because of Musk's Twitter takeover. <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen there? Uh, and I think uh, SHIB was dragged into that whole pump as well. Additionally, ETH and BNB have substantial weightings in the large cap index. And outside of large caps, most other indexes trade in a strongly correlated environment with, um, you, know, you see the mid caps, the exchange, is up 11%, mid caps up 9%, Bitcoin 6%, DeFi 6%, small caps 2%, and privacy coins 0%. And I've spoken a lot about why I believe privacy coins won't do that well, despite the fact they should be very much needed. But the problem is they can't really attract institutional money because the risk is too high from a regulatory standpoint. I'm not against Moneros of the world and everything else, but this is part of what we're seeing already. So let's look at some moving averages. This was a report, I think it was from Crypto Slate about six weeks ago, and they put together an interesting combination of moving averages. Let's walk through these real quick. 60 day moving average, 120 day, 200 day, 360 day, which is one year, and 720 day, two years. Now, only five times in history did we make it under 
all of these moving averages at the same time. And that every time after that, of course, Bitcoin rallied again, more history here. So the question is, how is Bitcoin faring since it did this? Well, let's zoom in a little bit and have a quick look. And here you can see where we are. And Bitcoin has been stuttering a little bit here, especially with that purple line, which is the 60 day moving average. It's kind of crossing it and then falls back down, crosses it, falls back down. And the question is, can we stay above it? Again, it hasn't rocketed above it like it did in the past, because there's a lot of macroeconomic headwinds out there. But again, we'll see. We need to recapture and stay above that $20,900, $21,000 level to just build a solid support and then up from there. But right now we are still stuttering. So place your bets. This is kind of the topic for the video today. And this was fascinating. So we like to look at uh, big options. What I did was I did a pull of all the open interest by strike price per the expiration December 30th, 2022, which is less than two months away, believe it or not. And here we can see a truckload of call options, 76,000 call options to be precise approximately. Um, and that is a big level of buys. The amount of puts only 33,000. And that gives a put call ratio of 0 0.44. And the total amount of bets in the market is about two and a quarter billion dollars. But the key thing to focus your eye on here is where the bets are placed. And a lot of bets are bet out to Big amounts around 29, 30,000, 40,000, not much beyond 60,000, but the 40, 45,000, and 50,000 mark has a big chunk of bets too. I doubt we'll get that high, but to make money on an option, you don't need to get all the way to that price. You just need a bounce in price. Also, the max paying price for those, as a reminder, is 22,000. That price represents the strike price where most options will expire worthless. And typically, we tend to be above that price as we go forward. So things from an option perspective, at, le at least so far, give me confidence we're going to go up from here for the next two months. Now, Ethereum is stunning. On the other hand, this has big, what I call $3,000 plans for Christmas for Ethereum. A lot of people are placing big bets on this. Huge bets, in fact. There's about 1.6 million calls, about 300,000 puts. Put call ratio is a measly 0 0.19, which means it's heavily bullish. All the bets, all the bets are placed on number go up for Ethereum between now and Christmas. And the total value is 3 billion. It's more is bet on Ethereum upwards action than on Bitcoin, which is, again, extremely bullish. We'll talk more about what all that means. So. We'll see where this pans out. But normally, these guys are very good, and gals who make these option bets have very good spidey senses. Let's talk about gold for a second. This kind of is interesting. And this kind of ties into the whole CBDC narrative and weird stuff and global uncertainty. But gold, so far year to date, is down 10% with the best macro, macro backdrop ever for gold. It's down 6.5% in the last quarter. And... Look what else happened in the last quarter. Central banks have been snapping up gold. They bought more gold in the last quarter than over, I think, since 1967, which is crazy. And you have certain central banks uh, like Turkey and Qatar were big buyers of gold. Uh, people like China and Russia, they don't report if they are buying but the point is 400 tons of gold was scooped up by central banks in the third quarter. And that's quadruple the amount a year earlier. And again, the highest amount of gold purchased since 1967. <laughs> so why, what I ask myself is, okay, biggest gold buy in a long time. Why is the price not going up? Well, I guess it's highly manipulated. But anyway, that's all according to the World Gold Council. But you know, if... Gold is being snapped up like that. I think other assets will be snapped up real soon too, like Bitcoin, the new digital gold. So let's talk about Ethereum, back to Ethereum for a second. Uh, this was a cool piece from an interview with Mike, Mike McClone from Bloomberg. And he said a couple of cool comments that I think are very 
well worth mentioning here. One, he said, Bitcoin's definable diminishing supply is unprecedented on a global scale, and therefore prices will continue to rise unless something reverses demand and adoption trends. But he does not see that coming. And given the laws of supply and demand, it's number go up technology. Second, he said, the fact that the benchmark crypto hasn't dropped with the latest round of hikes from the Fed signal a Fed endgame on the horizon. That's what I say. I say Bitcoin sniffs out stuff. I don't know how it does it. It does it. And also, it could be a potential catalyst for central banks to curtail tightening for markets as they go forward, which may favor Bitcoin. Obviously, we go risk on when that happens. And Ethereum, uh, this is kind of the key point of the article. The headline is basically doing to the world what Netflix did to Blockbuster. It's revolutionizing fintech and uh, all things like that. So it is super exciting to see. And that's one of the things that I'm super bullish on is the disruption of TradFi by blockchain. And Ethereum is in the cat bird seat for that. So let's look at some Ethereum TPS numbers over the last 30 days. And this shows you how the development of ZK rollups, sidechains, etc., are really there. You've got Ethereum over the last 30 days running at about 11.93 transactions per second. It can run at 15. It's running at just under 12. Arbitrum, 2.98. Optimism, 2.94. Those two are so close. Immutable X is off to the races, 5.12. And so rare, 2.29. Arbitrum, etc. All these different types of chains. This is super interesting. But you know what's even more interesting is when you look at this. It, and we know Ethereum is going to do well. But if Ethereum does well, leading L1s will do well too. This is the Solana speed. And it's just been going up since January this year. We just averaging at the beginning of the year about 2,000 transactions per second. It's over double that just in the space of 10 months. And we're now averaging over 4,000 transactions per second. Compare that to 11.98 for Ethereum, and that gives you something to think about so as we go forward. Anyway, let's talk about Domino News 2 next in the block. This is as inflation bites, which country will be the next to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender? And there's been lots of a new flurry of countries kind of in the mix. Let's talk of Venezuela, Nigeria, Mexico are candidates to join the Bitcoin Adoption Club. There's also chatter around certain regions of Colombia that I heard straight from a community member this morning directly, and also Costa Rica. So exciting times ahead, and it's a good time to adopt Bitcoin. Unfortunately, El Salvador picked probably the worst time to adopt it, but I do think two years from now, they'll be smiling a lot. So in addition, because it's political season in about eight days in the United States, this was positive news. More than half of midterm voters would vote for pro-crypto candidates. And the survey found that 52% of Americans, including 59% of Democrats and 51% of Republicans, I was surprised actually more Democrats are pro-crypto than Republicans, but what, what do I know, said that they agreed in a statement, crypto are the future of finance, just like what Mike McGlone said from Bloomberg, with 44% saying they anticipate including crypto in their investment portfolios in the near future, according to an online poll, uh, over 2,000 adults. And I think a Grayscale push for this, funded this actual research. Final piece of good news, kind of interesting. Zac Efron has a new movie. It's called Gold, because they were talking about gold a lot today. Shout out to everybody out there and Mr. Schiff, etc. But gold is essentially a story of human grit and greed. And that I think that's the backdrop for the movie. But it is a dystopian future. There's a lot of desert, a lot of lack of water, a lot of lack of humans. But these two men are probably symbolic of the entirety of humanity, where at first they are hesitant to truly believe their luck about finding a huge fortune is basically a big rock of gold under the sand. But then they quickly turn wary and distrustful of others. So humans need to get along and trust each other and have constructive banter back and forth, but not fight. And this movie is a backdrop of that. But the key part of the movie is they are driving along and listening to the radio. <laughs> and over the radio, uh, the radio announcer says, Bitcoin price touched $1.25 million. So I thought that was kind of funny that Bitcoin is in a gold movie. So uh, anyway, I find that interesting. So the bad, uh, 
not too much bad today. But first, uh, Argo Fire Sale. Obviously, Argo is the second one to hit the wall today. But Fleenspark swoops in and buys over 3,843 miners sold by Argo. This is one of those things where, you know, as I always say, mining is a cutthroat business. But with bad news for one, can be good news for another if they have the cash to take advantage of the situation. And uh, that's where we are. CleanSpark has extremely ambitious plans to grow their hash rate. And I think with all the other miners that are debt ridden hitting the wall, um, it's an opportunity for them to jump in and explode their hash rate to be ready for the next bull run. So interesting times ahead. In addition, a uh, big thank you to Sanjay for sharing this as well. This was a cool little statista, statistic of the biggest employers in the world. And typically, if you ask anybody, if you asked me uh, a while ago, I would have said it was Walmart. And it looks like Walmart is on the list. But it's not the biggest employer. And the U.S. retail giant has a massive 2.3 million here. Amazon comes close to about 1.6 million strong workforce. And this infographic shows, though, there's one sector that apparently has even more power, band power than retail, and that's defense. And the top ranking for the world's largest employers is the India's Ministry of Defense uh, with 2.92 million, followed by the U.S., 2.91. By the way, the current debt servicing because of the increase in hikes by the Fed now exceeds the U.S. Department of Defense budget. So interesting note there. So instead of paying for defense, they're paying for interest on debt, 31.5 trillion. And also ahead of that is the People's Liberation Army of 2.55 million people out of China. So I thought that was kind of interesting how the biggest employers in the world are defense people. Um, now, ugly news real fast. This is the bond return uh, over the last 10 years. And a big shout out to Safe Dina Moose, who posted this on Twitter. And he said, if you invested $10,000 in iShares US Treasury bonds 10 years ago and reinvested all the yields... You'd have $10,400 today. This is the risk-free bedrock of the portfolio. And his words, not mine, of all the, well, he said a, a word I will not repeat, but who call Bitcoin a scam. He kind of was pushing back at those who call Bitcoin a scam. When, if you look at the bond market, which is one of the safest places to park money, you would have basically made nothing over the last 10 years. Now, if you take into account loss of purchasing power, that $10,400 becomes about $5,600. That is shocking. So you would have lost a lot, just like you would have lost owning gold. Speaking of gold again, third time. Well, I won't mention it again, I promise. Now, staggering inflation means hard assets are required. This is a cool stat of the inflation rates around, the, around Europe, which are extremely high. Estonia, Top of the leaderboard, 24.1%. Lithuania, 22.5%. Latvia, 22%. Hungary, 20.7%. And all the way down to Sweden at the bottom, all above 10%, which is a staggering loss of your wealth just melting away if you're holding it in cash. That's why I always say hard assets as much as possible. And speaking of all of this inflation and all of this global monetary debt, the nuclear arms race continues. This is a central bank digital currency adoption update. There are now, and this is from the AtlanticCouncil.org, uh, there are now 105 countries representing over 95% of global GDP that are exploring a central bank digital currency. 10 countries have fully launched their CBDC. China is, is piloting hard and they will expand it in 2023. Jamaica is doing it too. Uh, Nigeria, Africa's largest economy, launched theirs in October 2021 and drove a lot of people to Bitcoin. And of the G7 economies, the US and the UK are the furthest behind. So shout out to USA and the United Kingdom. You're doing something good <laughs> by accident. This is where it's good to be behind uh, on CBDC development. Uh, European Central Bank has signaled it will aim to deliver a digital euro in the next two years or so. And 19 of the G20 countries are exploring a central bank digital currency, with 16 already in development or pilot stage. This includes countries like South Korea, Japan, India, and Russia. Each has made massive progress. And we have CZ helping places like Kazakhstan to launch and deploy their central bank digital currencies. This stuff is coming, ladies and gentlemen. 
Don't say you haven't been warned. Prepare. Get something that is not Orwellian. So with that, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, everybody in the chat that's out there. I will see you all later. And I hope this earlier time doesn't upset anybody. But I got an errand to run. Bye.